So in this video we're going to find the volume under a cylinder using a double integral. And so it says find the volume of the solid line in the first octant and bounded by the graphs z equals 4 minus x squared, x plus y equals 2, and x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0. This really is what's forcing that first octant bounding. So a little bit of redundancy in the information that's given. And when we look at the equation z equals 4 minus x squared, what we want to recognize is that the y variable is missing. So we know this is going to be a cylinder extruding uh, parallel to the y-axis. And in fact, it's going to be a, in the xz plane. This would be a downwards opening uh, parabola with the vertex on the z-axis up at 4. So, so it looks something like this. So we go from 4 down, it's going to hit the uh, x-axis there, and here's the y-axis, here's the z-axis, and that y variable is missing, so we know we're going to have a cylinder extruding parallel to the y-axis, but because we're only interested in the first octant, we wouldn't worry about the part of the cylinder that's uh, in any of the other octants, and we don't worry about anything below the x-y plane. And this line right here, there's going to be a line of intersection with the cylinder and the xy plane. And to find that, we would just set z equal to 0. So if you set z equal to 0, you get 0 equals 4 minus x squared, which means x squared is 4. So x would be plus or minus 2. The minus 2 would correspond to the part of the cylinder over in the, oct the, the other octant over here that we're not interested in. So we don't need, because we're uh, keeping the conversation in octant 1, we don't need the negative square root. So this is the positive square root. This is the line x equal to 2. And then we're bounding by the yz plane, the xz plane, the xy plane, and the plane x plus y equals 2. This is the plane perpendicular to the xy plane that extrudes parallel to the z-axis. So notice if you graph this, if y is 0, x is equal to 2, so right here. And if x is 0, y is equal to 2, so we'll put that right over here. So we've got a line going here. And we would have a plane coming up, cutting into the cylinder, and this plane would be perpendicular to the xy plane. And this is actually the region then r over which we're finding the volume. We want to find the volume under the cylinder over this triangular region. Sometimes the region is the most difficult thing to identify. So one thing that you can do, if, if you've got GeoGebra installed on your, uh, on your home computers, is you know graph the cylinder in GeoGebra. Remember that the default in GeoGebra is for the uh, x-axis to point off this direction. So if you want the standard view that we've been using, you rotate the x-axis into position. And here what I did is I actually typed in x equals 0, y equals 0, z equals 0 to get the x, y, y, z, z, y planes. And then I uh, typed in the line x plus y equals 2. So that's this plane right here perpendicular to the x, z plane. And I used the intersection tool, intersect two surfaces, to select the surfaces and find their intersections with the uh, xy plane and what that allows you to do then is to see that triangular region in the xy plane over which you're wanting to integrate. So this can be a useful tool if you're having a hard time drawing, hand drawing or visualizing the region over which you need to be integrating. It uh, can be pretty, uh, pretty useful to graph the bounding surfaces in GeoGebra and see what the traces of those bounding surfaces look like in the xy plane if you're integrating over a region in the xy plane. It also helps you to visualize uh, the surface that you're working with, the surface under which you're finding the volume. So zipping back into here, I've got, I've got the cylinder here. I want to find the volume underneath the cylinder uh, bounded by this region right here. So again, it's going to be a double integral. And I have two choices. I can either do d, dy dx or dx dy, but it'll be a double integral under the surface. So we need the height times dy dx. So it's going to be 4 minus 
x squared and we either do dy dx or we do the surface 4 minus x squared and we do dx dy. So if we do dy first then we're going to run uh, across our region parallel to the y-axis first so we need to think about what do the bounds of integration look like uh, parallel to the y-axis so we'd be running from the x-axis to the line it, right here so it would go from y equals 0 to this line is the line x plus y equals 2 so we have x plus y equals 2 so that means that y would equal 2 minus x so we'd be running to the line 2 minus x. Again, uh, when, if we're integrating with respect to y, we can't have y in the initial bounds of integration. It has to be the x showing up. And then we have to say next, what's the line interval over which we're going to run the dx's? And those are going to run from 0 to 2 because these ordered pairs both on both axes, this is the ordered pair 0, 2, 0, and this is the ordered pair 2, 0. 0. So we'd be running on the x-axis this way from 0 to 2. That's the line interval over which we'd be running. If we do dx's first, then our, we're going to run parallel to the x-axis, so we'd be running from here to here. So from the y-axis, which has equation x equals 0, so x equal to 0, and then up to the same line, so instead of y equals 2 minus x, we'd want to solve it for x and get x equals 2 minus y. So we'd run from 0 to 2 minus y, holding y constant, integrating first with respect to dx, and then we'd run this direction on the line interval from 0 to 2 over the y-axis, 0 to 2. And the reason for setting this up is we want to recognize that, that the order of integration, the dy dx or dx dy, can make a difference in terms of how much work there is to do, or in some cases, even whether it's possible to do the work. So in this case, if I'm integrating with respect to y first, I'm holding x constant. That means 4 minus x squared is a constant with respect to y. So my first integration would look like this. I'd get 0 to 2, integrate 4 minus x squared with respect to y, but 4 minus x squared is a constant. So it's just going to be the constant times y from 0 to 2 minus x, and then this is going to be a dx because we haven't integrated with respect to x first. And so then to simplify this, we would just run in 0 to 2. We put in the upper and lower bounds of integration. Clearly the lower bound of integration going in for y is we'll zero it out. So we'd wind up with 4 minus x squared times y, where y is equal to 2 minus x. This would be the next thing that needed to be integrated. And this is just this is just integrating a single variable equation at this point. So I'm going to go dot, 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 because we already know how to integrate uh, single variable integrals, right? So if we did with respect to x first, here's what we would get in the next step. We'd get the integral from 0 to 2. But we're integrating with respect to x. So here I have a constant. 4 is a constant with respect to x, so we'd get 4x. And then here I'd get minus one third x cubed, and I would need to run that from zero to two minus y. Zero to two minus y. We haven't integrated with respect to y yet, so we still have the dy. Let me make that two a hair better, two minus y. And then we would have to plug in our upper and lower bounds of integration. So here I recognize I'd be plugging in a zero for my lower bound of integration, which would just kill everything. So I just need to plug in my upper bound of integration. So I get the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 times x, where x is 2 minus y, minus 1 third of x cubed, where x is 2 minus y. Close all the parentheses dy. And then I could say dot, 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 because we're now we're integrating with respect to a single variable, and we already know how to do that. And the, the question is really, which one of these two looks like it's going to be less work? And I would argue this one looks like less work. We probably want to multiply these two binomials out before we integrate with respect to x, whereas the simplification process here looks like it's going to be a little bit more demanding. I have a term being cubed, which would be a pain to do, 
what you'd want to recognize here to, to if I do just a little bit more work to make your life simple uh, simpler instead of cubing the binomial notice that 2 minus y and 2 minus y show up in each term and it would make some sense to factor the 2 minus y out which would leave 4 minus a third of 2 minus y quantity squared and this would be dy and probably square this guy out at this point and then simplify it with uh, the stuff right here before multiplying it the rest of the way out but I think what's my, my point is that this looks to be much more work than this so the order of integration in this case does impact the workload that you have in order to resolve the integral or the volume.